Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Back at this again. Uh, today we are exposing again Mr. Mujib Ahmed of the UK, who has not done the proper research. How could he? How could he have done the proper research without a computer? Brother, it would have been too hard. So I'm going to go through everything you said, and I'm going to answer this detailed, um, in and out, no mistakes. I'm going to try. All right, so here we go. Uh, okay, so here we go. Firstly, to the brother, much respect. You're older than me. I respect you as an elder. You know what I mean? Um, if you reach out to me, I'll delete all my videos about you. You know, if you do some research work with us, if you listen and cooperate, I'll delete everything. Not a big deal, brother. I do a lot of this off of memory. Look at my blog. I've written 1,700 essays. I've archived the most information ever in the history of Ahmadiyya on the internet. No one's archived more than me. And I've been on the internet for 15 years, actively on different discussion boards. So, um, uh, so, so check it out. So the first thing he says, I spoke about Mexican Ahmadis. No, brother. I was speaking about Dario Jimenez. I respect that, brother. He was on drugs. He was drinking alcohol. He got out of jail. He was duped and hoodwinked. He was looking for a masjid, a Muslim masjid. He didn't know Islam. He had no idea what Islam was. He accidentally got called by an Amadi, or he called in the Amadi masjid. They got him to convert because they showed him respect. That's what I was saying the story is. And here's the reason I bring it up. I don't challenge a man like that. Amadis, you people I've been dealing with on the internet, a guy named Kiki. Look up Kiki. You, you'll find out who he is. He says, he's made this argument that if you don't know Urdu or Arabic, you, you don't know the Quran. You have no reason commenting on Ahmadiyya. He's wrong. You don't need to know anything. But he keeps making this argument. So because he made this argument, I'm going to go through every Ahmadi who doesn't know Urdu and Arabic. And I'm going to say, why are you an Amity? Because based on what this guy is saying, Kiki, you shouldn't have converted. So that's why I brought it up. And we have ex amnes who turn become atheists, agnostic atheists. We respect them. They eat pork. They drink. Kiki and Damon and Tariq and other Amity mullahs say, oh, these guys are on drugs. So the reason I brought this up, is when Amdis do drugs and drink alcohol and, and leave the Jamaat, you guys say, oh, they're bad people. But when, when people join Amadiyya from these things, and they're probably still doing it a little bit, you know, here and there, you know, behind the scenes when no one knows, Dario admitted that him and Damon sleep together. Look up their video. He slept over. What would cause a man to sleep at another man's house in his bedroom? in a small bedroom, and this man's already married with, with kids. So anyhow, anyhow, that's the only reason I brought that up. But you misunderstood, brother. That's your problem. You misunderstand. Okay, and then Damon Stengel is the next topic. The only reason he joined Amadeus was because they showed him respect. Damon Stengel has never been showed any respect. He's from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's 90% white people. He grew up in a racist environment. He admitted to being a neo-Nazi. He admitted to hating Muslims. He admitted to all that. And then why did he join Ahmadiyya? They showed him respect. It's the only masjid in Oshkosh. From what I can gather, I haven't found any other Islamic centers in Oshkosh. If I do, I'm going to reach out to them. Maybe they can help me uh, do some research or something like that, right? Damon Stengel's a psycho. He's a psychopath. These guys know it. Kiki, I, I didn't know this, and there's nothing wrong with this. Apparently, he's a disabled janitor. He's autistic. And that's okay, brother. Respect. No disrespect. I, I didn't know this. They told me this. I just asked for clarification if this is true. On top of that, brother, you, you know Damon's been stalking me for four years on, on Twitter. Do you know this? So again, brother, your heart might be in the right place. 
I, I respect you and et cetera, but you don't know what you're talking about. You haven't reviewed the data. Same thing with Muhammad Begum. You don't have a clue. All you know is what they told you. Because you come from an era where knowledge was verbal. Kiki too. Kiki doesn't know any of this. Kiki said uh, a prophecies fail. It happens all the time. He blamed uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Nauzabilla. Okay, so 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 that's the first two questions. Okay, I never raised an objection about criminals. I never said a criminal can't become a Muslim. Never said that. So I don't know where you're getting that. Again, you get the wrong impression. And that's because you have your AMD glasses on. So you see things that aren't really happening. But because you're an AMD, these are the things that you see. So we, so we forgive you, brother. Yeah, so uh, AMDs hoodwink people and dupe people all the time. Remember, in a previous video, I told you you don't know anything about Amadi in Africa. You don't. I told you about the split in Nigeria. You didn't know. There's five sects of Amadis in Africa, in Nigeria, by themselves. So knock it off, brother. You don't know anything. If you haven't done the proper research, why are you commenting? I don't go and comment on cricket because I don't know anything about cricket. I don't comment on hockey. I don't know anything about hockey. So I don't comment on things I don't really know about, that I haven't concretely done the research. Now, if I've came across it and I'm asking questions, that's different. So, okay, let's see what else. Oh, and then he says he studied Arabic. Brother, you've never written a thing in Urdu, Arabic, English, anywhere. You don't have a blog. You've never done any of this type of work. So knock it off. You don't know conversational Arabic. None of us do outside of the, uh, the, the Arab world. So stop pretending like you know Arabic. You know the Arabic that Mirza Glam and the Nuruddin taught you. They taught you Wafa means something else. They told you Rafa means something else. Hatta means something else. You don't know Arabic, brother. No amity. In fact, a majority of the Amis that I know don't know Arabic, including Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed couldn't say the letter Duad. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed couldn't say the letter Ayin. Ayin. He couldn't say Kaf. He'd say Kaf. And the typical Punjabi guy who can't pronounce the Arabic. A salam, brother. Salam, brother. So, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Let's see what else. Oh, you don't know about Muhammadi Begum. You don't know. They rejected. Okay, okay. Where, where should I start? Hold on. Let me look, let me look at my notes because there's a lot here. Oh, you said the family of Muhammadi Begum were, were anti Islam atheists. That's a lie. All you have is the testimony of Mirza Glam Mamad, a known liar. There's no additional evidence. You take Mirza Glam Mamad on his word. And you don't even ask for corroborating evidence. Why? Because you got your MD lens on. Why would you ask for evidence? Why? You just wouldn't. Okay. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed comes from a Muslim family that were atheistic. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's father never read Salat in his life. Look it up. Sirat al -Madi. There was no masjid in Qadian. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed never went to congregational prayers. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, in his youth, okay, I'm not saying after age 50. I'm saying up to age 45-ish. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed had written Brahini Ahmadiyya. He was 40. Let's just stick to 40. Up to age 40, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed never stepped in a masjid in his life. When, when his brother Mirza Ghulam, uh, Ghulam Qadr got married, his dad brought 22 dancing girls. These are Muslim people? Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's entire family was kind of Muslim, kind of. And brother, that's not up to us to say you're not Muslim enough. That's up to Allah. I'm just telling you there's no masjid in the village that they own. The masjid wasn't built till 1876. That's Masjid Aqsa. 
Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was 35, 36. There's not a single story of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed going there for Jummah. When Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was in Sialkot, 1864 to 1868, he never went to a masjid. He never went to Jummah. So Mirza Ghulam Ahmed himself was irreligious. And look, later on in life, people can change. Uh, Ahmed Beg, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed had an older sister. She was married in that direction too. This is his family. They come to Qadiyan all the time. We, we say in Punjabi Urdu, uh, um, Anjan Bodhiyadan. So it's wrong for you to call them atheist. If the brother says he's Muslim, then he's Muslim. End of the story. We don't get to ask. Now, if you live in Pakistan or Saudi Arabia, it's different. But in America, we don't ask. In British India, that's it. We don't even ask if you're a Muslim. We just, hey, you know. So, okay. The enemies of Islam? What did Ahmed Beg say to make him an enemy of Islam? The guy was a Muslim himself. What did he say? There's no record. There's no record of what he said that was anti-Islam. There's no record of him insulting the Prophet. You said he insulted the Prophet. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed insulted Rasulullah, peace be upon him, in every book. In every book. So stop. Please stop. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was called a kafir by the Ali Hadith before he started chasing Muhammad Begum. You didn't know that either, huh? Go to my blog, brother. I got all the references. You just have to keep, uh, search the keywords. It's that simple. But, but will you do it? People don't like to read. Oh, and then he said uh, they were pu uh, publishing pamphlets. Brother, you got it all wrong. They published a letter that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed sent to them in a newspaper. They never said anything against the Prophet Rasulullah, peace be upon him. You're mistaken. You've been fed these lies. And again, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's father, maybe he repented later in life and became a Muslim later in life. That speaks, I don't know. He got, a, he got a masjid built. So I don't know his condition. Maybe he was an atheist and he became a Muslim the last six months of his life. Maybe Allah will, will accept him. That's, I don't know. But I know for the majority of that man's life, he didn't pray. He didn't care. He was in the Sikh military killing Muslims. Wasn't the, uh, the Majadda, the, the, the 13th century, killed? And, and Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's dad was there in the vicinity? So again, you don't know anything, brother. Oh, so... <laughs> Uh, then he admits that uh, there was no conditions in the prophecy. You're right. I can't believe he admitted to it. Same thing with Atham. Same thing with his age. With every pro every prophecy of Mirza Ghulam has failed. Even the prophecy of Muslimo failed. There were no conditions. As soon as they fail, he's like, oh, here's the conditions. No, it's too late. And then he says, no, Allah doesn't have to give conditions. Brother, you need to stop making excuses for these people. Oh, then look, he doesn't know. Muhammad Begum gets married in 1893, I believe. Um, uh, right? Six years later, she has a kid. She has a few kids. In Anjame Atam, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed says, uh, no, she'll come to me as a widow. What? I'll show you the references at the end. I've written the best essay on the internet on Muhammad Begum. Alhamdulillah. I didn't do it. Allah helped me do it. I just put it all together. Allah put the DNA inside me to be able to do math computations and compare and contrast. Uh, Damon said I'm an academic genius. So, okay, let's see what else. He was like, I'm a getter. Oh, okay. God's mercy, they never apologized. When did, when did the family of Ahmed Beg apologize to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and repent? No records at all. But he said it. Amity's are the type of people who, if if, a, if an Amity tells an Amity something, they'll believe it just like that. No request for evidence, nothing. But if anyone else, now now they want to see. Show us the reference. So so this is a double standard. You need to stop.
<laughs> then he said they were begging. They came to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed begging and they repented. And then he says Mirza Ghulam Ahmed stopped. You're wrong. And I'll show you at the end. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed kept chasing her. This is his niece, his triple niece. Who does this to a family member? Amnes do. Amnes do. Kiki does it. Kiki don't care about his family. He'll disrespect any fan over Ahmadiyya. He'll kill a family member. Easy. Easy. And that's not even like, you know, he wouldn't even have to think of, uh, like think about it. Oh, and then, then the whole repentance thing, they repented. Because someone told you they repented, but you didn't double check. You didn't go and, and look at the data and see if it actually happened. I'm going to show you the data. I'm going to show you the data. How... Uh, the Ahmadiyya movement tried to buy the sons of Muhammad I Begum. And they actually bought one of them. He took the money, you know, but he wasn't really an Amity, but he would take the money. All right. So let's see what else here. Oh, oh, then he reads out the announcement of 1888. Is that all you know? You, <laughs> So you just give one piece of evidence and that's it. What about the other 70 pieces of evidence? 70. Or maybe it's 20. Maybe it's 40. You show one and that's it? Yeah, yeah, we know. We know. So, okay, now I'm going to show you my essay. I'm going to click share the screen. Oh, hold up. We're going to go like that, uh, like that. Click share the screen. Uh, okay, look. Who is Muhammad Begum? 1875 to 1966. Look, I've written the entire essay with references, with proper references. Look, January 1886, February 1886. I got all the dates. Look, here's the announcement that, that you're talking about. 1888. Here's the announcement. Right? There's many announcements. I've cataloged this. Is Allah home? He's chasing her. All right? Look, it keeps going. 1894. He calls the husband, uh, um, the, the husband of, of Muhammad Begum in Ishat the Sunnah, calls Mirza Glam Ammon the liar and a coffer. Look it up, brother. All you got to do is click on it. Look. 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 Here it is. I got the scans for you and everything. I even have a translation and a transliteration. Come on, brother. Come on. What are you talking about here? Then look, 1897. He mentions the prophecy in Anjami Atham. That's a married woman. Why is he talking about a married woman who has children? In 1902, he talks about it again. And then he gets a revelation, a virgin and a widow. Who's the widow? Muhammad I Begum. He's saying her husband's still going to die. He hasn't lost hope. Ijazi Amity. He talks about it again, 1902. 1907, he, he mentions his dead uh, uh, a, a cousin, Mirza Ahmed Beg. Look how many times he mentions him on all these pages in 1908. So then Nuruddin, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed dies. Nuruddin becomes the Khalifa. And he talks about it. Review of religions, June, July, nineteen oh eight. He says, "No, we're, we're going to get one of one of her children." So now the plotting began. Then look, October nineteen oh eight, Rahini Amadi, Volume Five is published. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed mentions like this is published after he's dead. He's mentioning them again. In, in, in Hakikatul Way, he look. He says, even though she's the he, he he's making excuses. So in 1947, Muhammad Begum and her family moved to Lahore. In 1948, Mirza Sultan Muhammad dies. In 1966, Muhammad Begum dies. And then look, they tried to bribe her. I got all the references. Look, look, look and, okay, let me go back. In 1913, he, he makes a statement. They tried to pay um, Sultan Muhammad, twist the information. Brother, you need brother. Brother, 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 you need to listen and ask questions. You need to ask, am I understanding you brothers properly? Because you're not. You're not understanding us. 
You should seek to understand what the other person is saying first before you start making arguments. You should ask for clarification on all these things. So here, there it is, brother. I did the video. Slam alaikum.